Hey everybody, welcome to the Wicked Kitchen. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make the most amazing vegan Easter meal. Special quarantine edition, you guys. You're gonna love it. We're gonna have a delicious kale salad, this amazing plethora of lovely vegetables, a little bit of tofu, some butternut filet mignon, some amazing, amazing, you're gonna love this one, is the potato wellington, good for anything. And then the sauce is a surprise and we'll show you that in the video. I'm so not used to doing these videos lately and especially being cooped up in the house. I know everybody's going stir crazy. I sure am, so why not eat healthy and enjoy this food? Stay tuned, here we go. I am actually being held up in the in the US right now and waiting to go back to the UK so I can get back to work. Uh, right now working from home like everybody else and decided to do some makeshift videos for you guys. So potato wellington. I boiled some mashed potatoes. I boiled some potatoes to mash ahead of time. So all I did was take four or five medium sized potatoes, chop them up, boil them with a four or five cloves of garlic, a bay leaf, strained them off totally, and then only mashed them with the plant-based butter. No other cream, because I want them really stiff. So we have a video for that right over here, and one of the other ones, you'll see it up there. So this is a puff pastry sheet. Just one sheet. You can buy them in the freezer. So we have that set, right? Another thing you're gonna need is a butternut squash. So what I did was I roasted off a butternut squash and you can see that video here as well. So where we do a roast tenderloin. And well, I'm gonna make this into filet mignon, right? So we have this one right here. And this is what I'm gonna trim first. So I, I roasted this off just briefly for at 350 and it took about an hour for this size. So just trimming the edges. And then I know the seeds are probably gonna end about right here. Just about. And I wanna scoop these out. So I'm scooping the seeds out so I can use the entire thing. So, all right, so I took the seeds out of here and all I'm gonna do is scoop the rest of this and put it in with the potato to mash it, right? So we're using the whole, we're using the whole thing. Uh, don't want any seeds, uh, any, uh, Skin in there, so I'm just scraping the skin off. I'm scraping the meat, meat off the skin. So I'm just gonna peel this butternut. Trying to get as little of the meat as possible. So it's best to do this the night before so it can cool in the refrigerator overnight. So it's not hot when you're doing this. It's, it's also okay to do it in the morning if you want. Should give it just plenty of time to cool off. So I think I can get two. I'm gonna use a little bit more in there. All right, I'm just dicing this up. I'm just adding this to the potato just for a little bit more color. And then I'm gonna cut this into twos. And then for the potato, I'm just mashing this in. Okay, so I'm getting my cast iron really hot and I'm just gonna sear off some of the spinach, squeeze out the liquid, and then we're gonna lay the, the cooked spinach on the bottom here for some color and some added veg. It's like two or three handfuls. It'll, as we know, it'll shrink down into nothing, so. And then I take the tongs and just squeeze out the water in them. There is a ton of water in the spinach, obviously. And we don't want that water in between the potato and the puff pastry because I don't want the puff pastry to, to get all moist and break and crack. So I'm just gonna lay this right on here for a second. All right, so back to the Wellington. I'm just spreading this out. Want to make sure there's some on the bottom and some covers it. Watch this here. We'll take the 
potato. And just enough. Now you don't want to get crazy with the potato on here too much and you want to form it kind of like you're going to be rolling sushi. And then I just like taking this extra spinach and making sure it's totally covering around. Right. And I already seasoned the potatoes with just a little bit of salt. So it's just the salt, the butter and that extra butternut squash in there for some color. So then I'm just going to take this. Roll it. Don't squeeze too much. I'm taking a little bit of plant-based butter right here and just around here so this will seal it shut. Just like that. And then I take the ends, crimp it over like this. That's done. Make this nice and round again the other end wrapping it up tucking it underneath so it's nice and sealed all right and then if you roll it a little bit it'll it'll roll out all the kinks all right just like that and then i preheated the oven to 400 degrees it'll take about 30 minutes So the reason why we want to start that now or the day before, like earlier, is because we want to cook it off and then it has to chill so you can slice it. Otherwise, if you go to slice it, it's just going to be mush everywhere. So what we're going to do now, since we have the hard stuff cooked and out of the way, I'm going to show you how to make this uh, really quick kale salad that we can serve with it. All right, guys, so this kale salad super easy. It's with avocado, uh, grapefruit dressing. We'll massage it, a little bit of green onion and some salt and pepper. Maybe we'll throw in something else if we can find it. So I've already trimmed up one bunch of kale and all I did for that when I say trimmed it up is just pull the leaves off the stalk. Okay, and that's it. So these are just the whole pieces of kale. Chopping quickly. Just so they're bite-sized pieces. So we have the kale here. I'm going to do the avocado. Just quick. Squeeze it right into the salad here. The grapefruit. The easiest way for me anyways, because I don't like using my hand to do it, is I just squeeze it right into here. It'll catch the seeds. See that? So we have one whole grapefruit. Mm, yes, it smells delicious. So I'm squeezing both sides in it. And add a little bit of salt. A little bit of black pepper. Just a little bit of green onion. Really simple salad, super simple flavor, but really delicious and no oil guys. This salad is super healthy. I'm gonna wash my hands, I'll be right back. All right, remember how important it is to wash our hands everybody. So I just washed my hands here. I'm just going to massage that avocado and that grape juice right into it. Use both hands. If you have kids, this is great to have them help a little bit. Get in and play with the food. And I like to do this recipe at least a couple hours, if not the morning of before, just to let the, ma the kale marinate in the dressing a little bit. And it's such a strong leafy, leafy lettuce type thing that you can totally do it a few hours ahead. All right, so next step, you guys, we're gonna do veg. I broke down one head of broccoli, one head of cauliflower, but I'm using half of the cauliflower for the sauce. And this is just half, it was a big head of cauliflower. 
uh, and then a packet of chestnut mushrooms. I haven't been able to find the exotic ones here where I am right now. So hopefully we can find some of those, but all the power to the little baby mushrooms here and a little bit of onion. All right, guys, so just quickly, what I'm gonna do is the mushrooms here. I'm just gonna cut them, slice them in half. That's it, we're gonna have big chunks of mushrooms. I'm gonna cook these, we're gonna press them because people have been asking like, oh, can you press anything else besides those exotic mushrooms? Yes, you can press any kind of mushroom you want. So I'm heating up the cast iron pan. I will add a little bit of the oil. So all I wanna do is heat up the pan really hot, wicked hot, ripping hot, whatever you wanna do, but it has to be really freaking hot. So I'm gonna make sure that's really hot, okay? So I'm just gonna add the mushrooms right to it. Face down for as many as I can. I'm gonna press it with the second pan. So what the pressing is gonna do is even out the cooking and all the surface that's touching the heat will get nice brown and crispy color. And while that is cooking, the broccoli is something I'm not gonna have to cook on the stove at all. So I'm just gonna toss it with a bit of oil here just to coat it. All right. Just to coat that a little bit, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. And then just toss that. Add it right to the cutting board. So I have another pot. I'm gonna get this on heat, hot. So by pressing them, you're gonna get a lot of water come out of the mushrooms. And I want that water to evaporate and cook off before I touch them again, because it's preventing all the brown and caramelization of it. So once that water disappears, then it gets nice and brown, delicious. I am gonna add a little bit of flavor to them, a little bit of black pepper, and add a little bit of salt. And I'm gonna take the cauliflower, add a little bit of oil, and again, season it with the salt, pepper, This one, just because I'm feeling like it, we're gonna add a little bit of smoked paprika just to the cauliflower. Just a couple pinches. And toss that. Okay, so mushrooms, you can see. These are gonna go right on this side. Now this pan's smoking hot. I'm gonna add the cauliflower. And then I have a little bit of white wine. I'm not a big wine fan as far as drinking goes, but I will use it to cook with. And I'm just adding a little bit of there. So I add a little bit of the white wine to create the steam. So I just want a quick steam on the exterior and that's gonna help it crisp up and brown really nicely when we roast it off afterwards. In fact, I'm gonna add a little bit of the, just a, tablespoon of the butter for that flavor. All right guys, so the onion, I'm gonna add the onion to the cauliflower. I just wanna cut it into half and then sections like that. Just cut it in half and two. And I'm just gonna add it right to the cauliflower. Also, sorry, garlic. Just really big, rough chops like this. And just go one in as well. Okay, I give the give the pot a little bit of sh little shake. So I'm gonna leave that to cook for like two minutes, 
and then we're going to plate it up on the roasting pan and then it's going to be ready for dinner just about you know we'll roast it another 15 minutes right before dinner and then it'll be ready so remember we're not trying to cook these fully we're just trying to quick steam them and then we're going to roast them so we have that ready give it a quick stir and then i'm adding this right to it awesome so we have this ready to go in the oven when we're ready to eat, so 15 minutes before. So I'm gonna set this aside for a minute. All right guys, next step is the sauce. So we're gonna make a horseradish peppercorn sauce, <laughs> cauliflower sauce. I'm trying to think about what to call it. I wanted to do peppercorns with real peppercorns, but I could not find any at the store. So I have just regular black pepper, salt, a little bit of the seasoning here, the turkey turkey seasoning. I hate even calling that. It's just the nice fall blend of sage and thyme and garlic, and then a little bit of smoked paprika and horseradish and mustard. So that's going to give it a lot of flavor. And then I'm also going to use my favorite drinking plant-based milk is the Oatly. So I boiled off the other half of the cauliflower. And all I did was boil it with four cloves of garlic. That's it. So I'm going to strain. I'm actually not even going to strain it because I might use some of the liquid. So I'm going to just add the cauliflower right to it. And guys, we will have the whole recipe listed below. So, so add all the cauliflower. Perfect. I have about a tablespoon of horseradish, tablespoon of... Dijon, mustard, what else? Oh, black pepper. I'm gonna add a little bit, so it's probably a good half teaspoon because I want that black pepper flavor with the horseradish and then a good pinch of salt. And then also, well, so like a quarter teaspoon of the smoked paprika and then a pinch of the fall rub if you want or the turkey rub i'm going to add the milk as it blends to the consistency that i want and remember i'm going to heat this up again so i'm going to do it a little bit thinner so it'll cook on the stove and thicken up as i do that blend until wicked smooth, silky smooth, and it's still pretty, yeah, it's pretty good. I'll show you the thickness of it. So it's pretty thick. It coats the spoon. All right. And it's banging. So that's done. So I'm just going to add the sauce right to this pot. And put it on a low heat. So on a very low heat. All right, so you guys check this out. This is what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. And what I want to do is let it cool like overnight because it's so hot right now. I'll let it sit out for an hour or so just to chill before I put it in the refrigerator. And so it looks like this, right? So it comes out, same exact one. I practiced this last night, so you can see there's no magic here. It is this one we just made, how you saw it, is exactly right here. But this is overnight, sat overnight in the refrigerator. So I'm just gonna set this aside for my snack for the week. So I'm gonna set this aside until we need to cut it. And we're gonna show how to do the butternut squash here. So the butternut filet mignons right here. I'm just gonna place them on here I'm gonna take a little bit of the plant-based butter I have and I'm just gonna rub that top. So all I'm trying to do here is create a nice sticky surface, surface for the herbs that I'm gonna put on here. So black pepper, 
a really fair amount. Salt. And then some of that delicious fall blended. So I'm gonna press that in, right? And I'm gonna push this here. Same thing. So I'm also gonna do tofu, you guys. So being in America, I have the opportunity to use my friend's hodo soy. So I found some of this at the store, thank God. And I'm just gonna open the second package so I get Oof. This is the extra firm. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this as I'm doing with the butternut. So I'm just gonna rub it with a little bit of the butter here just to create that surface and do the same thing. Black pepper. Fair amount. Salt. Like a broken record, I'm using all four of these. Same ones, the, the illustrious fall, not turkey blend. Press it in. Oh my, it's sticking to my hands. Flip it over and do the same thing. The pan is hot. Sauce is on, Just give the sauce a quick stir. Okay, pan's hot. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of oil to the pan. So one, tofu, two, I'm going to let that sear for a couple minutes. All this extra spice that fell into the pan, I'm going to use it. Add it right to your... Okay. All right, guys, so obviously being in quarantine, I am doing this for the camera. I usually do this on the stove, so I'm just gonna flip this. It's been searing for a couple minutes. And it's starting to get a nice little golden brown. Also flip it, that's not even ready yet, so I'm gonna put that back. Crank up the heat. And while that's searing and finishing off, I have the potato wellington. And I'm gonna slice this, so however many slices I can get out of it. See, if you slice it when it's hot, it's just gonna go all over the place. So that looks amazing. And I'm just gonna put them on the pan here. Just face down. Now this should be good. Yes, get a nice little crispy crust there. Okay, put the tofu over again. Back on the stove. Just giving those on the stove just a couple more minutes. The sauce is going. Sauce looks great. Everything looks great. It smells delicious. I'm starving. Nothing's in the oven. This is done. So I'm just going to put this here. Right. And this is going right on to the board here. One, and we'll put two here. I'm gonna do this half. So tofu. One. Looks great. Just making some room. So, to make it easy, this is it. And we have the sauce on. So now I can relax, chill out, do whatever I want. And before dinner, I just pop all this in the oven for like 15 minutes, all right? Because we have the salad ready, right here. I got the sauce ready. 
I'm just warming it up. So everything is just about warming it up and doing all the hard work and prep ahead of time. And it's not even that hard, guys. You guys have seen it. It just makes it dinner super easy if you're organized, have all the mise en place, crank it out, and then just sit back and relax. You can have this done in the morning and have dinner in the afternoon and you're good to go. So I have the oven on 400 degrees and it's, I'm gonna just add this right here. The potato. And then I'm adding a big bunch of veg here. All right, maybe 20 minutes. All right, I'll let you know when this comes out. I'm going to take a short break. Oh no, I'm not going to break. Hold on. This quarantine has got me all crazy. So I'm just heating up that cast iron pan that we cooked everything in. See, you can see it, right? And so I'm going to add the white wine just to glaze it. Just a little bit here. And this, the sauce that I had on the stove, I'm just adding it right to it. Just for that extra flavor. All right, so we're not wasting anything. I'm gonna lower that heat again. Stir in the sauce. Yeah, it's freaking amazing. And you guys are gonna love that. So after a few minutes, we'll come back when this is all out and we'll plate it up. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes and we're gonna just take these out of the oven right now and plate them up. Do it, just try to do as best I can here. <laughs> you guys, this smells absolutely delicious. Sauce is great, you guys. I'm just gonna pour it into this bowl here. See that for the camera? Beautiful, right? Beautiful presentation. Five on here. I'm gonna plate one now. We got the sauce. We got the kale. We got this gorgeous platter. This is all the makings for a vegan Easter. Sorted for you guys. Done. I'm gonna do three. The tofu pieces right on here. One, mind my fingers. A couple pieces of broccoli. A couple pieces of the cauliflower. Uh, and then a few of the mushrooms. All right, so just finishing off with the sauce here, you guys, right on. Awesome. This is delicious. Gorgeous. I know I have an herb, so hold on. Parsley. Right there. You know what? I could put the kale salad right on it. Why not? Okay. Vegan Easter. It's gorgeous. I can't wait to eat. Enjoy the holiday weekend, everybody. Be safe. Wash your hands. Stay home. And I miss you. I'll see you soon. Why don't I close the refrigerator too? I'm used to eating over a garbage can in the kitchen. So I have no table manners. <laughs> <laughs>